Now let's get to some questions coming in from our chat box. The first one here we have for Mark. Mark, you mentioned there are three areas to which you can make an impact in energy use in water and wastewater facilities, equipment upgrades, process improvements, and buildings. Where should someone start to focus to make the biggest impact and why? That's a good question. And if you recall from the first part of my presentation, I talk about this Pareto analysis, and that is looking at the areas where you're going to get the most bang for the buck. And of those three that were mentioned in the question, I would say process improvements, because process typically consumes maybe up to 80% of the overall energy associated with that industry. So that's exactly where I would start is on the process side and start to do a decent baselining effort to see within the process where, the, where you can maximize your effort. Great. Thanks, Mark. Todd, this question is for you or, or Nicola. Why do you or why do you believe some critical businesses are slow to adopt microgrids? Uh, good question. Uh, I don't think that there's really a magical bullet. I'm a firm believer that nothing really happens without a significant emotional event. And long term power outage is one of those events that will drive a customer to start looking at how do I support uh, resiliency for my business? or you could be mandated to do so just like the Department of Defense has mandated the uh, 14 days of resilient supply of energy, sustainable supply of energy. So like I say, there's, there's really not a, a magical bullet other than it's cause and effect. Do you see um, in, in California because of these wildfires, what are, do, are you seeing an ups, uptick in need for or questions about that? for uh, power secure? Yes, we are. Uh, so there's that emotional event, right? Is the public service power shut off says that it's it's not in their control. It's in their best interest most of the times, but not in their control. So we do see a lot of customers that are coming to us for short-term and long-term res resiliency solutions just based on the uh, increased wildfire uh, activity. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Mark, this question is for you. Do I save energy by installing BFDs in my facility? Yeah, I mean, most of the time that answer would be a resounding yes. Uh, BFDs, for, most of the applications in this industry involves a variable torque, meaning to grow out the, the, the process, there's going to be a, a need for a varying flow of some sort or pressure. And VFDs are the solution of choice to, to implement, to take advantage of, of, of the curve. If you recall from my presentation, there was a difference between a constant torque curve and a variable torque curve. So there, you know, a simple installation of a VFD you know, can provide the ability to capture that energy savings. And also, you know, when changing out and putting in a VFD, it will also require an inverter grade motor. So you also get the, you know, the double, you know, the double edged sword of the variable torque capability plus the higher efficiency inverter grade motor. So it's an excellent solution and it's, and it's easy to accomplish. Thank you, Mark. Todd, um, it's a two part question for you. As a customer is exploring a microgrid solution, what is the right team of people that should be meeting with you? And in your experience, is there a preferred financing model for microgrids? Okay, two good questions. Uh, the team that uh, we looked for from one of our from our customers is we need someone that's really knowledgeable about the facility. We need to know where we can interconnect and uh, what circuits are carried by those interconnection points. So someone that's really familiar with the facility, someone that can uh, collect all of the energy usage information and not part of the customer, but it is important to have your utility account manager as a part of this, um, this team as well, because they do have to provide very critical information of load sizing. Uh, mm -hmm. So for them to be involved is uh, extremely important. And then someone that is going to, um, to, to look at our proposal uh, from a financial means. So um, driving into the second question uh, is, CapEx versus uh, as a service. So we will typically offer a CapEx price and then as a service price. So it's important for someone from the financial um, part of their business. The I don't 
really think it always has to be the CFO, but someone that uh, really understands the financial metrics of the business to be able to choose what's the best path. So we see um, at, at, for different types of facilities, uh, manufacturing facilities where there's a pretty heavy maintenance staff that maintains, like if it's a process um, uh, process manufacturing like plastics or petrochem, you have folks that can actually maintain the type of equipment that we put in place. But if it's a heavy commercial or heavy retail business, the as a service is typically more appealing to them because they don't have that staff that can maintain the equipment that we put in place. Back to what we talked about in the uh, presentation is transfer of risk. Uh, for our microgrids, you want the output of the microgrid. You don't want the headache of having to uh, constantly maintain that microgrid. Great. Thank you, Todd, for that answer. Back to Mark. How does biogas cogeneration fit into a net zero facility strategy? Yeah, that's a good one. And it actually is a very large piece of the puzzle for a net zero. The, uh, the generation from, you know, whether it's cogeneration, cogeneration biogas, or just a straight stick cogeneration, will offset a significant amount of source energy emissions, which can count you know, tremendously against the overall emissions count for, for a facility. So it can play a, play a huge part, and specifically with cogeneration, where you can make use of both the electrical energy and displace the source emissions associated with that, and taking that waste heat and turning that into a useful product and displacing thermal energy, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge component. I mean, it's not... You know, it would not be surprising to have one single, you know, let's call it ECM or cogeneration solution allowing for an entire facility to go net zero if it's properly sized and if there's a thermal load sufficient to be able to displace it. So good, good question. And it's a it's a, it's a big, it's a big part of the, you know, if you mm -hmm. if you want to get the net zero, it's a, it's the solution of choice. 